Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining me today for the webinar focus on the Solence Low Pressure Pneumatic Packers. I'm Joe Ravel, a sales and technical representative here at Solence, and today I'll briefly take you through a discussion on what packers are, how they're used, and the type of packers available. Most importantly, I will go over in detail the packers that Solence has to offer and how you can incorporate them into your groundwater applications. To start, what are packers? In the hydrogeology and geotechnical fields, packers are devices used to create a specific zone of interest in a well or borehole, like you can see here. Packers serve as plugs to stop the mixing of soil gas and groundwater at a particular depth so investigations can be focused on what's happening in that zone only. At the desired depths, packers are expanded or inflated to seal off and isolate the discrete zone, so an isolated zone here. This can be done using one packer to monitor the zone above or below it, or two packers to create an isolated section between them. Packers were first developed for use in the oil and gas industry, where they were applied in high pressure situations such as hydraulic fracturing. Now in the geo-environmental field, packer technology has been adapted for similar uses, but generally at much lower pressure situations. In the hydrogeology, the focus is on the geo and hydrogeological characterizations done through monitoring well and borehole testing. Data is collected from the unsaturated Vado zone or the phreatic zone, the saturated portion below the water table. Using packers to isolate depth discrete zones allows sampling of soil gas, groundwater, and for performing aquifer tests at multiple depths. This creates a detailed characterization profile, again, all from using packers. There are different types of packers, including mechanical, hydraulic, and pneumatic. The type is generally based on the mode of expansion and sealing. Some are permanent and some are temporary. The choice will really depend on the application for the type that you use. So when should you use Solens packers? Solens packers are pneumatic, meaning they're inflated by air pressure, so we have a hand pump to inflate them. They are designed for temporary low pressure applications to monitor soil, gas, and groundwater. Solens offers two sizes of packers, which you can see are 1.9 inch and are 3.9 inch. So 46 millimeters and 99 millimeters on di in diameter. They are designed for installation in boreholes or wells with inside diameters starting at 1.9 up to five inches. So 48 up to 127 millimeters. The size are offered in both single and straddle. And in a few minutes, I'll discuss the differences between the two. In general, the packers consist of a gland of black carbon reinforced rubber over top of a PVC body, which you can see here. Due to the design of these packers, the maximum deployment depth from ground surface is around 275 feet or 84 meters. Maximum submergence is around 150 feet or 48 meters. The deployment depth will also depend on other types of monitoring equipment, and I'll have some examples showing different applications with those. Again, as these are low pressure packers, the maximum inflation is around 50 PSI or 345 kPa. For proper sealing, you have the inflation pressure plus the hydrostatic pressure deployed at the location. Our operating instructions go into more detail and we have a nice chart that shows depth, size, and the pressure required. So let's get back to discuss the difference between a single packer and a straddle packer setup. As you can see, the Solent single packer has an inflation line barb fitting, which is used to run to the surface to inflate. We have an eye bolt, which is used to lower and raise the packers up and out. A single packer has these on top, whereas a straddle, you also have a barb fitting at the bottom, so you can have that inflation line running to the second packer so when you do the hand pump at the surface, it inflates both the upper and lower portion of that packer setup. In addition, the base of a straddle packer also has a threaded piece, which allows you to put in the perforated straddle pipe. So that's the length of section that's open in that isolated zone for monitoring. So we do sell different lengths depending on the length that you need. And so in terms of, of the different lengths, you may want a shorter interval if you're trying to characterize fractures or a longer interval if you're trying to um, capture a larger geologic area. So to review, the straddle packer system consists of an upper packer, a lower packer, 
with the perforated section in between the two. Um, we always have a single packer as the lower packer in that setup. So now let's look at some of the products and how they're actually installed. The first part is the packer itself. So you can see here, we have a section of quarter inch tubing, which is connected to the barb on the top. And on the upper end, we have an inflation line fitting. That's the part that connects to the hand pump to inflate. We have the eye bolt, which I'll show you a tagline to connect. So that's when you're lowering and raising up out. And on the bottom, we also have one. So if you're hanging instrumentation, such as a data logger, you have that option available. Again, up at the surface, use a high pressure hand pump. So it's just a, a bicycle pump with a pressure gauge to pressurize the packer itself. And an option to lower and raise is our 103 tag line. So this is nice in that it supports the entire system, but you also have markings on the tape or cable depending on what option you're using. So when you need to get down to that exact depth, you know off of the tape that you have the packer and the isolated section exactly where you want it to be. All right, so now it's time to discuss some basic applications or typical applications that, be, that can be done using um, our packers. And I also have a few examples that show some of our other instrumentation available. So just a quick review, Solon's packers are meant for temporary low pressure situations, which makes them ideal for groundwater sampling at vari and various aquifer tests, one of which I'll show you in the first example. But before going over the applications, I just wanted to touch on a couple of good field practices for those of you who are unaware. Um, before deploying your packers, you should have a good idea of the geologic conditions and the flow regime for your site. So that will give you an indication of how long the actual application will take. And it will also give you an idea of the exact deployment depth you need them at. So always with placement, you just need to keep in mind your objectives. So if you're looking for physical properties, um, of the hydrogeological conditions, you don't wanna miss any of those zones. So setting the packer interval to slightly overlap between tests, that's typical practice. If you're looking at groundwater chemistry variations in a long screen well or open borehole, for example, you might not wanna have those overlapping sections. You wanna have discrete zones. So in general, it's a good practice to know the exact measurement so you have your packer right where you need it. So detailed field notes, photos, diagram, that definitely helps you um, remember where the packer isolated zone was. And then um, again, as I mentioned with the tagline, you can use that so you have your screen interval at exactly the right location. This animation shows how a 1.8 inch or 46 millimeter diameter single packer can be used to perform a falling head permeability K test. All packers have eye bolts, top and bottom, for connecting monitoring instruments such as data loggers. In this case, a Solent's level logger is connected to the eye bolt on the bottom of the packer and set to record water level readings at a high frequency. In this example, the depth the water is measured and then the packer is lowered down the two inch or 50 millimeter OD monitoring well to just below the water level and above the screen inlet. The packer is then inflated to 40 PSI or 275 kPa. Potable water is now added to the top of the well. This height of water represents the change in head waiting to be released. Then the packer is instantaneously vented, supplying a known volume or slug of water to the monitored zone. The level logger records the changes in water level as the well recovers. You can see the resulting curve in the graph on the left. The data is used to determine permeability at that discrete depth. In general, Permeability or hydraulic conductivity tests like this can be performed using single or straddle packer setups. A series of tests can be completed at a number of different zones in the same borehole. This can help to provide a hydraulic conductivity profile. Performing these simple tests in multiple monitoring wells across the site can help interpret the stratigraphic profile and provide additional information to understanding the conceptual site model. Packers can also be used temporarily in other formations to prevent multi-aquifer flow during these types of tests, so neighboring aquifers are not affected by the test being performed. Okay, so on the screen now, you can see a case, um, an example of an application where we've used the model 105 well casing and depth indicator to detect exactly where the casing, so the white here is where the casing ends. So with that, I'm able to place one of our larger diameter packers, a 3.9 inch or 99 millimeter single packer 
exactly at the end of where the casing ends. So now I can sample from below the packer using the drop tube, which is running to the surface, and that's open to the isolated section below the packer. We offer a number of narrow diameter sampling options that would work in this situation, including our 410 peristaltic pump, 404 mini inertial pump, as well as the 408 micro double valve pump. So all of those would fit through that riser to sample below. The next section here highlights an accessory that we have available for our larger diameter pumps, so our pneumatic pumps, and that would be the pump to packer adapter. So here we have our one inch ladder pump connected to the top of our 1.9 inch um, straddle packer setup. So the pump to packer adapter allows the intake to be situated in the isolated zone. So when you're actually using the bladder pump above the upper packer, it's actually sampling from the isolated zone. That's handy in that we um, only really need to have that section of isolated zone, so where the perforated pipe is allowing that sampling to occur. So let's take a look at another application. So in this illustration, we're looking at a 3.9, 99 mil, diameter packer, straddle set up with an isolated zone in between. What's nice with this is if we need to purge the well, we only purge a small volume here. So that comes in handy that you're not dealing with all that extra water if you're purging a larger section of the, the well. Inside this riser pipe, we're using our 102 P10 narrow water level meter to take water levels, as well as our mini 404 inertial pumps. We have a foot valve here to sample. So with that, you're really guaranteed a more representative sample because we've purged just that section. So now all of the formation water is entering in that isolated zone and we're sampling just from that particular section. So using packers in a series of sampling rounds can assess the water quality at a number of different locations or zones within the same borehole. So here we could just lower down to the next section and with all of that, we start creating a vertical distribution of chemistry. And if any contaminants are within the borehole, we start characterizing that all together. So as I mentioned before, sampling rate right from an isolated zone gives you an exact distribution of contaminants for that area. In this final example, we see a 1.8 inch, 46 millimeter straddle packer setup being used to sample in an open borehole at a contaminated site. Although not shown in this animation, when using a straddle packer setup, a drop pipe is required as the threaded connection provides a leak proof seal to avoid any water above the packer from mixing with the water in the isolated zone. Once lowered to the desired depth, the packers are inflated using a hand pump at the surface. In this case, the isolated zone is located at a depth that matches part of the contaminant flume. Sampling is done using our narrow 404 mini inertial pump to the drop pipe running to the surface. Once the required amount of sample has been collected, the packers are deflated and lowered down to create a new isolated zone within the borehole or removed if all of the desired depths have been sampled. And with that, I hope I've provided you with some valuable information and have given you some ideas on how you can use Solon's packers in your groundwater monitoring or investigation projects. If you have any questions about this webinar, any of the packers or other equipment I talked about today, or any of the other instrumentation we manufacture, please don't hesitate to reach out to our technical sales team. We can be reached by phone or anytime via email at instruments at solens.com. That's available on our website as well. Also, don't forget to follow us on LinkedIn and YouTube and our other social media platforms shown here, as we're always posting product tips, announcements, and showcasing interesting case studies. Also be on the lookout for future webinar invitations. Thank you for joining me today and take care.